it's, it's not easy, you know, with us being open on social media and our YouTube. Um, I've thought about many times too, it's like just calling it and going, you know what, well, I'm just gonna focus on racing. Let's, we're gonna close the doors on that. And then, then I've talked to so many people that are like, man, we watch your videos, middle-aged men. What you say and do has helped me so much with my family or helped me as a, as a husband, as a, as a dad. And then I'm like, oh man. So I think about that stuff. I'm like, with a lot, a lot of the content that's out there today, the majority of it being not so great for, for people, yeah. I'm like, we have a small voice in, in this small world of, you know, of our sport. And I feel like it's important that we keep that going. Woo! And we are back. Whoa, that like messed everything up for me in my head. Guys, we are back and we are back with none other than one of mine and Danny's longtime friends, Brian Deegan. It's always crazy. You always forget that you're from Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. Right? And every yeah, time I, I tell people that, it's not like they're like, yeah, it's like, wah. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, bro, it's kind of different, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. You got out of there pretty young, though. Yes, I escaped at an early age. Yeah. You did escape at yeah. an early age. Yeah. Right when I realized dirt bikes took me like all over the United States, I got to see you know California, Florida. Realized there was more to life than the Midwest for sure. We're at an iconic location here, the Coliseum, and I would think we'll start with um, yourself first before we move on to your kids. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's uh, and congrats. You're a super dad. Oh, thanks. You're yeah, you're publicly a super dad. People follow you. People worship the way <laughs> that you have uh, built your kids. And not only that, that you've taken this like marketing mentality that you built on your own. You did this from ground up since you're a kid. Yeah. You built Meta Militia into this gigantic brand. You were the, the the most famous freestyle motocross rider in the world and invented tricks and with the bad boy and showed up and did all these things and. You've taken that into fatherhood, and 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 probably uh, switched it up a little bit. You know, it's it's it's. Uh, I, th I think you're probably a, a bit of a different person now than you were, say, 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, but uh, w one thing I acknowledge and admire with you was um, uh, what you've done in with social media and YouTube, and you've opened uh, uh, essentially your family, and 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 uh, you've opened the window to let people in and, and people have really followed that journey along. Yeah, for sure. No, well, thank you. <laughs> That's quite the intro there. So, uh, yeah, a lot's gone on in my life. And like I was talking to Danny over here, I'm like, man, I, I think 40 was like my mark of like, when I was younger, I didn't think I was gonna live till I was 40 just cause the lifestyle, everything yeah. we did was, you know, so on the edge and it's uh, cool to kind of look back at it now. And like you're saying, being here at an iconic place here that had so many memories and it's uh it's been an awesome journey dude coming from a small town in nebraska and you know taking a chance and moving to california with no money and you know sleeping on my buddy's floor and like going all right i ain't i ain't turning back we're gonna make it happen and and went out there and was able to race supercross you know as when i was able to go out and and come here that night as a privateer at uh, the team moto triple x and and win this race and uh, i didn't know what to do going to the finish so i just go throw the bike over the finish and Man, what a what a cool night! And let's to, uh, uh, let's uh, let's we're gonna pull that up on screen right here, actually. So we're gonna I'm pulling that up right now, and um, I mean I think it's pretty amazing that like there's so much going on tonight. Here right? it is, here it is on screen right mm -hmm. now. The famous Ghost Ride the Whip here in the Coliseum. I feel like this is what everyone has been talking about going into <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, as if Hayden doesn't have enough pressure. <laughs> Oh, I know. Huh? I bet he's been asked quite a few times. Yeah, dude, it's like the 90% of the questions. Are you going to ghost ride? He's like, I got to win first, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the first thing we got to. So. And there it is. Uh. <laughs> Not supposed to do that, right? No. I don't think you, <laughs> yeah. But I you knew that. you cleared the line before you did it? Because that would suck if you ghosted it and then you were like two feet from the line. They tried that. They tried Actually, it. one of the dudes, I won't mention his name, but he, one of the guys I beat, he tried to get me DQ'd and said I wasn't on the bike when I crossed the finish. And they looked in the rule book. They were like, well, there's no rule that says that. The rider, they both crossed the finish line, yeah. right? And so they made a new rules from what I heard from that day. So that was cool. So you made you basically started that rule. Started a new they rule. They had to yeah. make a new rule. <laughs> There's been a lot of rule yeah, changes. There's been a lot of rule. <laughs> been a lot of rule changes. A lot over of rule the years. changes in my life, for sure. Um, so, dude, let's like 
that, let's sink that in for a second, mm-hmm. and you can take back and look over the track there. Mm-hmm. What does that What does that mean to you now for that to happen, and then for your son now to be here today? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think at the beginning of this year, it, we it, his name probably wouldn't have been in this top three field, but. Your son literally is racing here today for half a million dollars. Yeah, he is. And he, he earned that, right? At the end of the day, you could think, ah, oh, it's, you know, a name and this history and this legacy of, of racing. And, and uh, really, he's the one that's up 6 a.m. every day with his running shoes on, running miles, cycling hundreds of miles a week and, you know, doing motos every day. And he's, you know, at the gym. He's super focused, goes to bed early, eats right. I mean, that's pretty heavy for a 17-year-old kid, dude. Well, that's yeah. it, right? And it's yeah. like we had Villa Poto on here before, four, four-time yeah. champion. And it's the, the, uh, it, the, and help us out here, but there's probably a reason why these guys get to 26, 27 and retire because they've devoted the, the, yeah. the, the, their whole life has been to eating right. Do, if you want to win, you got to do what Hayden's doing right now. You're yeah. not... I would say I agree with that. I think I'd love to see it change a little bit so the riders still love dirt bikes when they retire, you know. I feel like it's such a grind right now that guys are getting to that burnout point later in their life. And I and I, I think Roxon's done a good job of changing that up a little bit. I think the Lawrences have done a good job of changing that, making it more fun. Uh, I think you. Can, I think there's a new future that I'd like to see where riders actually like having fun through their career at times and it's not such a just – head down grind and this is my job like i want them to love dirt bikes because yeah. i love dirt bikes yeah i want them to enjoy that yeah i don't want them to retire one day and not ride a dirt bike that's the whole reason we started doing this yeah because you know? it, it, it's a lot different than there, there are nascar drivers that are in their 40s yeah and that's a professional sport and and but it's uh it's 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 crazy this is a lot more grueling on yeah. your body it's physical it's very yeah. Very physical, very dangerous. It may be the yeah. most physical sport in the world. I think it probably is one of them. You know, sure, you got yeah. UFC that is 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 yeah. is maybe, but it's a different physical thing. It's yep. it's uh, different injuries. But they, they don't last long in the UFC, right? They no. retire pretty young. Yeah. So it's, and if you uh, break a bone in the UFC, it's like a major ordeal, mm-hmm. right? Like oh whoa, and and here it's like ah, oh, broke bone. Well, because yeah, I think like, you yeah. have that competition. <laughs> like if you know someone has an injury, a prior injury, that's where they attack. Like that's like just yeah. like a, a way to win. Yeah, like if yeah. you know they have a bad shoulder, go after it. Yeah, but sense. it's got to be really similar too, like in motocross and mm-hmm. and just riding, right? Where you're not always healthy, even though you are at like the peak of your career, yeah. right? You're kind of nursing an injury or something here yeah. or there. That's the goal too, is to, which I've been trying to figure this out now because it's my kids, so it's important to me is, how do you get through your career, you know, with the least amount of injuries? And if that means that night you give up that, you know, maybe it's a position or a certain thing that you're not comfortable with to go to the next race, and that's probably what you need to do. Like it's a long career. The goal is to make it through with least amount of injuries in your body. You want to have, you know, a, a body at the end of this career that you can live with. And um, so, yeah, it's it's a gnarly sport. And you know, the one thing I hate about it is the danger of it. It's just dangerous, you know, and it's because you're riding on the edge the whole time. A lot of people don't see that. During the week, they're riding on the edge when they practice. So it's it's literally every time they're on a dirt bike, it's they're on, a, on the clock, lap time, lap time, lap yep. time. It's it's high level, dude. It's a lot more high level than when I did it. Like I had fun doing it when I raced, but I, you know, I pushed myself. I didn't have a trainer. I didn't have all that, but it was different levels, you know. What about? I'm gonna pop another video up here. This is you doing the. Uh, I believe the famous 360 should come up here. Um, look at that. Look at those crowds. That was back here. Yes. That was here in the Coliseum. Yes, X Games, man. So you're ten times X Games gold medal. Uh, ten X Games medals. Um, uh, over your career, um, mm-hmm. here it is. Yeah, it was a big moment there that night. I'd never done that trick ever till that ever? moment. Yeah, well, I did it in a foam pit. Sorry, I did it. Never did it on dirt. So that the big difference is the consequences are much higher, right? right. So that night, I was like, I needed something. <clears throat> Travis was gonna win, and uh, I was like, I got to do something. And I was like, the crowds here, the energy, the the ambulances are there, the the TVs are the TV is rolling. So if I crash, it's at least gonna be a cool reel. Uh, I'm going for it, and uh, somehow it pulled it off, and it turned out to be a really big moment, you know. And so. this moment's <laughs> coming up right here again, in case you missed it. Um, and then I'm gonna ask a question. Wow, I can't believe that's right here. Yeah, like literally, like right down the steps here. We were pull, pulling <laughs> yeah. that from Bloodline, the documentary yeah. about yourself. Um, we're gonna play that trailer later on and put a link to that. Um, so, Paul was telling us earlier that uh, 
that on the lead up to that, and you mentioned Travis Pastrana, Travis Pastrana was going to win. Um, and then he was lost to go. He didn't know you had that trick in the bag, did he? No. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, no. we heard there was like you definitely kept it under wraps where he'd kind of been promoting it as like coming. Yeah, he he was doing it in the phone pit also. Yeah. You know, and that's where a lot of controversy came out of that of everyone saying, oh, it was Travis's trick. He did it first. I said, yeah, I get it. But if you're an athlete, you know, it's whoever lands it first, like really claims it right anyone can try it in a phone pit and it really comes down to who lands it and he had a chance to do it in the run I don't think he was going to do it I think he was just it was one of his tricks he had he just yep. didn't need to he was going to win and then I was like no nah, I gotta do something to step this game up yeah and I did and then he was like oh then he had to do it <laughs> So, which is good. That's the game. You got to right? push yeah, it. That's the game. So um, like... <laughs> I, I was there, unfortunately, when the you did the 360 on snow. Mm -hmm. That did yeah. not work out. No, so well. it didn't. No, that was, <laughs> I don't know, dirt bikes and snow, I, it was a sketchy mix. It sure. never worked, right? Yeah, you it, had those big studs. It looked cool, but yeah. for you guys, it was very unsafe. Very, yeah. It was already, yeah, it was very unsafe. So that night, yeah, I went to do a 360. It was right after the hype of, you know, just doing it. You know, everyone expected it. And it just wasn't the right lip. It was an ice lip. It wasn't shaped correctly. And I kind of don't know why. I just felt like I got to do I got to at least try it. And I went off the lip and wasn't even close and went like a 100-foot uh, gap to ice, to flats. I missed the landing and went way past it. Landed on ice, shattered my hip, my arms, both arms, my hip. And that was a that was a tough moment for sure, you know. That was how, a tough how is your body holding up now? We, we, we know you're into no. your 40s now and yeah. you're broken. And we go back to that um, and, and, and more so... Yeah. And racing, freestyle motocross, I feel like you guys, it's your job is to break bones. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the highlight reels is that, unfortunately. But uh, I feel good, you know. I've gotten more into training and, and trying to stay healthy because the kids, you know, my kids are, you know, athletes. And I'm trying to, like, I like going jogging with them. Yeah. Or, you know, spending that time at the gym with them. And, and uh, as long as I'm active, I'm good. Yeah. You know, they, if I take weeks off and, and don't do anything, yeah, my body hurts for sure. Right. So the, yeah. the, 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 the motto is there, guys, is stay active. Yeah. But me and Danny, um, with you over the years, with Metal Militia and Grenade, and yeah. we had very similar companies. And it was a really, it was a really different, it was a different time back then in the early to mid 2000s. Yeah. Um, you don't really see too many brands like that anymore. Um, and, and we lived kind of that moment and it was even cool that we were able to have your logo and our logo together for yep. so long. And it's, uh, I guess my, my question is to kind of both you guys here. It's, is there a reason why we don't see that as much now in our, in our world? Was that a moment in time to where, um, you know, guys creating the image in our own brand or is it, is it got too commercial now or are kids too focused? Cause we kind of came from a bit of a looser background. Yeah. Ha has what <laughs> yeah i mean i think for sure like you know the early 2000s was when you know obviously like i think our sports were kind of exploding and snowboarding skateboarding was kind of skyrocketing you know alongside moto and it really gave this really cool time for riders and people involved to just kind of like own their part of the industry you know and for yeah. us it was a big thing with grenade to be like you know what like we're gonna make stuff we want to make and we're not just gonna like listen and take paychecks from some of these giant brands or do whatever and Owning that freedom was just so cool because we got to build so much through it for us. Like, you know, all these team videos where we got to elevate 10, 15 other riders that were like all our friends and homies who may have not got this kind of factory ride. And, yeah. and I mean, same kind of similar for you, right? With the whole compound and everything you guys put together. Yeah. So, you guys, yeah, you guys were snow and that's, you know, we were dirt. So, and it was kind of cool that X Games would bring that together. Yeah. And, uh, and we all kind of had the same mentality. And, and it was, going back to that, was a point where we had, it was X Games, so everyone, every company was trying to put their logo on you and pay you some money to promote their company. And then I started thinking, I'm like, why are we making their brands cool? Like, why are they putting their, why don't, you know, why are they paying yep. us to do this? Why are we not making our own brands cool? And I think that's where, you know, I saw what Danny was doing with Grenade and us with Militia. And we like, we started swapping logos and, and sharing and collabing. It's probably one some of the most OG collab stuff. Do you, you guys know? remember yeah. when we all first met? It was at a competitor's house back in the day, and it was in Aspen X Games, and we all stayed in the same house together. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was some after party or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you <laughs> had the motorbike up in the living room. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. They it were the days. At Aspen, yeah. But it that was. was fun, it yeah. was X Games kind of bringing uh, summer and winter together, and, and we all, you know, became, you know, fuck, we're here today. We're li- li- yeah. lifelong, uh, lifelong memories. Yeah, and uh, I think that what you're saying is those, those companies coming together, athletes, you know, athletes supporting each other was a big thing at X Games. That yeah. wasn't in Moto. Athletes don't support each other in Moto as much. Like, in Moto, everyone's at, after each other. It's a real competitive thing. It's real, really something I don't like about the sport yeah. is these riders end up becoming enemies as they race because they're so competitive. They become friends afterwards when they retire and this, that. But I like the X Games, how everyone was cheering each other on. That yeah. was cool. And, yep. and, you're always, and you want to beat the guy overall, but still you don't want to see him crash and get hurt. Like you're, everyone's cheering each other on when you're up on the ramp. And to me, that was something I wish X Games could bring more into supercross yep. and motocross you know um we're gonna stick on uh the the, the x games kind of topic there but more of a modern you you, you kind of brought uh jacko jackson strong yep. kind of into this world per se it was here i think at x games yeah. i think he may have still been a teenager yeah, yeah. i don't know he was a mechanic of some sort <laughs> he, he 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 really looked up to you yeah. um and it's really cool uh to see now you know, he's kind of the forefront. He's kind of one of the leaders, one of the, the guys, like, trailblazing. And he really does kind of attest or attribute kind of a lot of his success to you, mm-hmm. which is really which is really cool to see. Um, and and uh, uh, I just kind of wanted to – how did that relationship with you guys kind of start? Yeah, Jackson was young. Uh, we met on the Krusty Tour when we were going to Australia and going on these tours where we'd do freestyle shows in front of these sold-out stadiums around, all around Australia. It was like like rock star tour deal. And, and uh, Jackson came on the tour as a local boy, local farm kid. Like he, and he was probably 12 or 13. And imagine like being like the farm kid at 13 getting thrown under the crew with us on the bus. Legitimate dude. farm kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine, dude. You guys changed his life. It changed his life. <laughs> I know it's always for the better, but uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> we've helped mold that kid. Oh, yeah. And, and um, he is one of the most like, like honorable, honest kids, like hardworking. Yep. You know, he never did it for the money. It was always just he loved riding. Yep. And he loved the, the aspect of trying to one up each other, which was part of the game. Yep. And uh, and he's still in the game today. You yeah. Know? He's he's he's, he's, well, he's still well, you know he's he's still leading the way. Dog, you know man. I I I, yeah. I uh, we can have this conversation about uh, I, I was a little upset he didn't win the X Games. Yeah. You know, X Games this year was a gold medal by a trick that had been done like 15 years ago. Really? So I don't, I don't understand that he went around the bike. He yeah. Did the, it was cool. I'm not saying it wasn't cool. It was just hard to. Jacko did like a no hander front flip, which yeah, which is gnarly. Yeah. Which is it's those all. Are, those are hard to judge, man. There's such two different tricks. You know? It really so, is, so right? Hard. And uh, David, David won. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And listen, what he did was sick. What he did, I'm not saying it's maybe not I big. missed it the first time because when I saw it, I was like, dude, that was gnarly. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. was intense. And he, but yeah, how do you judge two tricks that are completely different but yet both the same level of sketch? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, they both almost should have got gold medals, even though I know that doesn't really happen. But right. Like that. Yeah, no, it, yeah. It, it doesn't happen like that. You have a documentary about yourself. So the Bloodline documentary right here is out. Um, it's on YouTube. It's on MonsterEnergy.com. It's 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 more so about your life and some of the stuff we've been talking here. There is your classic kind of militia days. There's the crash where you snapped your femur. Mm-hmm. Um, this documentary's got a lot of views and a lot of play. Like, how how was it to um, how was it to do a documentary about yourself and your career? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was important to me to tell the story. I feel like a lot of people don't totally understand the whole story of coming from Nebraska. Small town kid, not not you know having coming from much and uh, going to race Supercross, and it was almost like a movie story, right? This kid from a small town, and, and I was able to make it through relationships and you know working hard, and and I wanted to tell that story, and and I went through a rough time in my life, you know, my parents divorced at a young age, and I think I carried that for a long time. I yeah. think I was an angry dude for many years, and, and uh, I lived that through the militia days, and. And uh, we were rebels, and we I lived that for for a while. But it was it was tough, dude. Like that mentality, keeping on to that for that long, you know. And then uh, once I, you know, had Haley, or we had Haley, and that kind of was a life changer there, you know. And it took me a while to change, you know. Yeah. It took a while for me to go. Okay, I'm a father. It's my daughter. Like I have to try to be an example. Where it was a complete change, yeah. you know. And it was cool though, because that allowed me to do that. 
so the documentary kind of went through that through you know hel helping Haley become a racer in NASCAR to uh, Hayden's career in motocross and then Hudson you know my youngest coming along too so so what's going on with Hudson is he he's he's on the bike yeah, Hudson likes to ride. He he rides for fun more. He's more the kid that just likes to do everything. Yeah, like he's he scooters, he skateboards. He's he, good at scootering. I've seen him yeah. scooter at your house before, yeah. and he rips. He rips. Yeah, he just does that. He's just that kid that can kind of go, jump on anything and do it. But he loves fishing. I don't know. That's just and he loves to cook, which is very weird. Like I just he's an old soul. <laughs> yeah, he's a total and he old cooks soul. Super good. Like this morning, he made us all breakfast. Really? Yeah, he just loves it. And, <laughs> And then he's really good at fishing. He takes it super serious. Yeah, like, that's, that's hard. It's really yeah, hard. Yeah, and he rips. Like, there's a science to fishing. He it's, catches big Every time I go, big bass. And I'm here, I won't catch anything. And I'm like, bro, I'm using the same bait and everything, yeah. dude. And like, <laughs> same boat, same bait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw yeah. recently you guys were fishing off the back of your sea deal or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's his idea, right? He's, yeah. Um, uh, Haley, can we talk? Uh, uh, how did the cast off come about? Like, you, uh -huh. you've got this girl that's uh, a, a, a Brian Deegan's her father, mm -hmm. living, grown up in Temecula, surrounded by dirt, literally grew up on a dirt ranch yeah. where there's every kind of dirt thing you can do. How did she end up in the car? Uh, that was, you know, from a career of dirt bikes for so long that I had a lot of injuries, you know, a few near death experiences on dirt bikes toward the end of my career. And I got into car racing. So I got into rally car because of X Games. And then I got into off-road truck racing. Which you pretty yeah. much had another separate career in. Whole in another career. I took it super serious. Ended yep. up winning, you know, X Games gold here in rally cross. Yep. And then I ended up winning a bunch of truck championships. And I loved it because it was like moto, but it, you're in a roll cage. You know, at some age, you got to kind of graduate. You feel to, safer in safer there. Safer in a cage. Yeah. And then uh, they had a kids race, kids uh, class at the pro races on the weekend. And so I put, Haley wanted to do it. I said no. Uh, Mom was like, get her a card. I'm like, no, she doesn't. She's not a racer. Uh, she's arts and crafts. She's really like kind of passive, quiet. And I was against it. And then mom kept pushing it. And I, she's like, dude, you got, you got to get him a car, her car. So I finally did. Got her a cart and she just started cruising. All of a sudden she started going up and started, and she started winning, started winning every race. I'm like, yeah, she's got something for this. And uh, then we kept going into uh, NASCAR was the next step for, I felt for a female racing nascar was the pinnacle to, to have the best career yeah so we went that way even though i don't know much about nascar we went there and, yeah and was able to have her get a ride with toyota then now with ford so yep. and she's in the game now yeah no it's it's, it's been cool to, to 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 see that and i remember i remember you guys showing up i, I remember you kind of showing up to those races and being like I don't know. <laughs> yeah we're, here, here we go yeah uh, you know what i liked about Haley though but before we get off her when she was on the show mm -hmm. she's not only great at what she does but she's also being so inventive on how to make nascar and that bigger and better like she just had ideas and there's like a creativity aspect to her which i thought yeah. that was really interesting that she wasn't yeah. just settling in on being a good athlete she was like this is how we can make this better like this is how we can elevate my sport this whole thing so i yeah. thought she was incredible no, that's cool i think nascar is old school right like, if you think of nascar you think of like earnhardt you think of like yeah. just old school that vibe but things have to change over time to progress yeah. you know and i feel like her coming in as a young female pretty had good social media presence uh brought in her youtube aspect and i think she's helped the sport quite a bit yeah and i think the other drivers are kind of seeing that and that that sport is changing now yeah. it's just changing quite a bit but the drivers now it's becoming important to have social media presence yeah. obviously for all athletes so i think she's in a good position but she's still young you yeah. know for that sport the guy's racing in their 40s and 50s it's like, crazy no like, she's literally. got plenty of time yeah 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 you plenty of time I mean? to figure yeah. it out yeah. and yeah. and 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 literally you go through those highs and lows yeah. of figuring it out yeah but it's one of those it's one of those sports or industries that you get in it you're in it for a long yeah. time you're like in it, it yeah like a yeah. kurt for example yeah like, yeah he just retired and he's 42. Yeah, yeah, I think she's still, <laughs> at the end of the day, the fastest girl in NASCAR, yeah. right? So, yep. I, and I know you want to win. As a racer, you want to be a racer and win. But she's still the fastest girl in NASCAR. She still has a lot to learn. I think I think under the right guidance and the right team and coaches, I think she's – I've seen her race. I know she's fast. Yeah. Like, I know she could do it. It's just uh, – it's hard for me because I'm always here with Hayden at the motocross races. Yeah. He's just young and needs, you know, needs well, that guidance. Well, you've got to play so. your time right, yeah. and, and and I saw you for uh, many, many years. You, you you have literally had to go backwards and forwards, but in the beginning there, you were with Haley uh, every step of the way, yeah. and I think you got her to the point to where she is her own human and, and, and yeah. doing her own thing and under control, and then 
along comes Hayden. And I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you guys expected the success to happen with Hayden like it, it did in the last two years, especially this year. No, he started pro his pro career a little early, you know, and, and I think – we were worried of throwing him to the to the wolves, you know. We we're like, ah, man, this we're, this is the young. You only get one shot at this. Uh, we was kind of worried to put him in there early, and then he gets chewed up, spit out. Um, so that was a really tough decision. Uh, but he got to the point where he he was winning all the amateur races, uh, and there was nothing really left for him competition wise. And we're like, ah, we're kind of holding him back now. So we ended up throwing him into the last few outdoors, which didn't go great at all. He like crashed and it was like, oh no. Yep. And then he, he was like, no, I got this. Yeah, I can do it. And so he trained all, you know, trained all winter and then came back for Supercross and they lined him up. And, and I mean, his first race wasn't great uh, amateur wise. It, it was the futures. He went out and was supposed to win. He had a lot of pressure and he was just crash, crash, crash. And we're like, oh no. And then he's like, no, I got it. And they're they like, you're not racing pro next weekend. They literally called it. They said, you're not racing, dude. Because he was too squirrely? Because he was too squirrely the first <laughs> race, dude. And they called it. I'm like, oh, man, he did all this work. He's like, no, I got it. Let me race. And he's like, I can do it because the pressure is on me more to win amateur than it is to win pro because I'm not expected to win pro. Yep. <clears throat> so he lined up for Houston, his first Supercross, pro Supercross, he ended up getting fourth which was awesome. Yep. And then he just kept snowballing. He ended up second in the points, like literally battling for the champion. Battling. Battling. So, so I think that level was there. It was so high, and he just kept going towards it. Yep. And I think that's still there, as we see today, right? And I, we didn't expect that. Like, and now I look back at it, and you know how we prepped him since he was a little kid. Yep. We, we had a Supercross track in our front yard since he was little. Uh, he would ride laps on a Supercross track before he went to school. He would go to school at like 7 a.m. So at like 6, 6.30, he was doing laps on the Supercross track. This is how like amped he was about yeah. it. And then, uh, so anyway, anyway, my preparation or our preparation to get him here, I think I underestimated it. You know, I thought, oh, he's going to be somewhere around a 10th place guy right off the bat. Yep. And I underestimated our prep. Yep. You know, from the mental, physical, to everything we did for him to be ready. Yep. And I, he came in, and once he started feeding him those challenges, he just kept rising. And I think we not even seen anything close to his limits, you know? And then the mix between the indoors and the outdoors, like, he yeah. seems to just kind of... Figure it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then today, like, obviously there's no whoops, but yeah. this is... People are going to be moving today. Yeah. And obviously it's Hunter and Joe and him that are all kind of in the mm -hmm. running. What... what, what for you or, or for him, like what the the advice on this one is just get out in front, right? Yeah, you got to get a good start here because there's no whoops. There's not a lot of separation, and I think they they build the track like that on purpose so that racing is going to be really tight. Uh, but it's good because the whoops for him, he's still learning. So that was a point where he's not that isn't his forte yet, which is so it's good for us not having whoops here. <laughs> That's a, like a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think if he can get a start, he'll, I think he can get it done. If he gets a start, trust me, he, he's a gamer. Like he'll do what it takes in it. But if you told me at the beginning of the season, he's going to be battling, beating Shimoda and, and, you know, Lawrence and, yeah. or at least, you know, in the fight, I'd be, I'd be like shaking my head, dude, you know, but now I'm like, yeah, he, it's the real deal. He's 17? 17, yeah. 17, and he's racing for half a million dollars today. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of wild, right? Yeah, yeah, and he's, yeah, to him, he's, like, like I said, I'm probably more nervous than he is, you know, like I. <laughs> I bet, I mean, that's kind of like, what is it like actually, like, because I'm sure you, you know, with your wife and when you were doing freestyle, like you made people stress out or made them yeah. worry and now you're in that position watching you know your kids like yeah. literally right at the top <laughs> level of whatever they're doing yeah no, it's, so what's that feel like for you now it's it's tough and i try not to let it like get to me too bad because i'm like man this is a cool moment like yeah and i it's it's you gotta take it all in take I it mean, in look at it. Yeah. Look but i right bet now. they could tell <laughs> i bet they're like dad you're stressing me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're stressing me out. Yeah, I like, start pacing and I'm like bouncing all around and I'm like the the dad that wants to like, you know, like critique everything and and uh but yeah, it's hard. You know, I think mo mom gets excited, but like and I know for me, I I love these moments, you know, and, and there's so been so many good moments and and we 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 love the excitement of it. We love the energy. Yeah. I feel like for me that when I'm screaming and yelling and we're cheering and it's that's real, dude. Yeah. You know, and if that offends people, oh well. Like I like if I'm over, if I'm too animated, oh well. Like you know, at the end of the day, I love it and I and I freaking it's a moment that I'm enjoying, 
and I just I don't care, dude. I think it's cool. I think I think you guys are, I think the Deegans are pretty black and white. You either love them or you hate them. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you know yeah, what that's I mean? life. I think that's everyone when on social media nowadays. You know? If yeah. hey, if, if you got haters, it means you're winning. You're succeeding. Right? That's true. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you'd ever please anyone nowadays ha, ha, or everyone. Yeah. Ha, how did you know or what, for you I remember we had conversations kind of back in the day and it was like do we do a TV show or do we just kind of put it all on YouTube and you decided to go to the YouTube route yeah. which was the smartest decision yeah I think we were early in the game yeah. you know now I see YouTube a lot of people are trying to do it which is good it helps the sport but I feel like we, we started when Hayden was 10 years old and uh, and we started telling our story and our story is just our just racing like we're just a family that's races Haley was getting into NASCAR you know now Hayden into motocross I still competed in, in car racing and that was part of the story and I just thought yeah, it's a cool story we'll tell it and I want to tell it our way you know and that that was the main thing for me to do a reality show which we've had some offers to do them and I thought, man, and they just would never give me final cut. Like, you know, right. I, yeah. And I'm like, if I can't have the voice on the final cut of what we look like to the public, then it's not worth it, man. Like, no. we're, we're already happy where we're at. We're, we're content, right? Like, no. I don't need the show to be on this next level. Like, if, if we're good where we're at. So I don't want to ever have something make us look bad out of context. And, and I want control of, you know, I want control of what we, what we put out there yeah. on, on social. And that's kind of why we do our own YouTube and, and it's grown. We have multiple filmers and editors now and it's, you know, people that travel with us and it's uh it's a full-time job, dude. People don't understand, but it's, I mean, you know, you've done it. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. it's like gnarly to have yeah, cameras no, all I the time. Yeah. It's definitely weird. Yeah. Like we'd always, I remember going into like filming a series where like a week or two before you'd start filming, you'd be like, oh man, like this is the last of my freedom. Yeah. And then it's like 18 hours a day yeah. of whatever happens, happens. Yeah. But I think it's so cool that like, you know, you kind of learned a lot from like making, yeah. you, you know, militia videos and all these videos to then like doing it your own on YouTube where like you do have total yeah. control yeah. and you're not listening to some lame execs. It's some like TV being like, you need more commercials or something. Yeah, this yeah. isn't commercial. That are planting we stories. Yeah. Like, we need drama. But yeah. like, yeah. how did you like getting comfortable being yourselves in yeah. front of the camera with your kids, like disciplining your children, yeah. like how <laughs> watching yourself do it, like did it, do you think it's helped your parenting? Do you think it's helped your coaching? Like what, mm -hmm. I just letting your life be exposed, but have it organically, I think is such a struggle, especially with reality TV, if you don't have a director, like how is that transition of just like life yeah. versus watching yourself? It's hard to, cause you raise kids and the hardest thing you'll ever do is to, to have build a discipline and have not say control but respect with your kids and, and you know you start building them up with this name and fame and a lot of times it works against you you know because right. they start thinking oh, all right because the problem is they get other people start coming into their world going oh you know you know what you could do you know what we could do like yeah. you know and, and they start influencing and and i'm like you guys realize the most <laughs> we got to Helicopter. It's a police helicopter. There actually. we go. Maybe they're looking I'm for you. Hide out. <laughs> 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 so yeah, they. But it, but it, anyway, it's about keeping your circle tight. Yeah. Right. And, and and the kids understand that. Yeah. And and we set goals. We're like, okay, here's where we're headed. Like you know, Haley has her goals. Hayden, we all have our goals, and, and we're shooting towards that. And so it's keeping the kids busy. Yeah. And, uh, and I think as long as they're active and busy, we're good. Yeah. You know, when you, just let, when you let other people raise your kids, it, you're not gonna have the best, <laughs> the best right. results, you know? Right. And, um, but it's, it's not easy, you know, we, us being open on social media and our YouTube. Um, I've thought about many times too, it's like just calling it and going, you know what, well, I'm just gonna focus on racing. Let's, we're gonna close the doors on that. And then, then I've talked to so many people that are like, man, we watch your videos, middle-aged men. What you say and do has helped me so much with my family or helped me as a, as a husband, as a, as a dad. And then I'm like, oh, man. So I think about that stuff. I'm like, with a lot, a lot of the content that's out there today, the majority of it being not so great for, for people, yeah. I'm like, we have a small voice in, in this small world of, you know, of our sport. And... I feel like it's important that we keep that going. And, and that's yeah. kind of my feel on it. Yeah. 
Who knows, though? Well, you never it's know. it's important to yeah. even acknowledge that, like, hey, there's times where I don't want to do this. I do yeah. want to quit. And it, so it's like you don't look like this ideal family setting. It's like sometimes it's hard for everyone. And yes. I think even just saying that for anyone watching knows that it's not everything that, you know, the camera's portraying. It's <laughs> a lot more. And I tell people that. They're like, oh, you have such a great, you know, uh, relationship with your kids or your, or your, you know, your wife. I say, we only show the good stuff, dude. Yeah. It's like, I go, bro, bro, I'm the normal dad, dude. I'm moody. I'm the guy, right? Yeah. Like, I have my moments, bro. Like, we all have our moments, right, Diego? Yeah. Right, right. I mean, right. so obviously we know, like, you know, with the show and yeah. everything and where your kids are at. Like, you've yeah. been a great mentor in pushing them. But, like, maybe a little bit more about, like, how you got here to where you won this race. Like, who kind of played a part, like, kind of, like, leading you. and We won a gold medal from. here, not a race. So you uh, won the championship. No, 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 no. The ghost bike. He did win the race. Here. The My race, bad. yeah. Yeah. So. so Wait, so you've won two gold medals here in two different disciplines. Oh, I won. Three. Uh, no, I won uh, Supercross here. Then I did one best trick uh, here, a gold medal and best trick. So yeah. you've won two different disciplines in here. Yeah. Wow. And today could be a third. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I guess. It was. <laughs> a fan, not, not, well, family, yeah. Like a family. <laughs> and, and we do have the game at our house. And, and, and whoever wins that week gets to put their trophy on on like the dinner table, you know. And, and oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and, and so and it started when we were like years ago. And it was young. Sometimes it'd be my trophy. Sometimes it was Haley. Sometimes it was like, and we just do that game, right? So uh, I think yeah, Hayden's got some big, you know, big moments coming up. But I try to keep it fun, you know. And I get it. It's it's a big deal to come and win this race, but uh, we try to keep it fun. He's young, you know, so hopefully he just enjoys the moment. Enjoy the moment. I mean, yeah. this is a a, a super special day, um, and it's uh, for you. You enjoy yeah. the moment. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying, man. It's race day, so I'm getting nervous, but yeah. Brian Deegan, we appreciate you here. Um, good luck today. Good luck for Hayden, yeah. and just I think enjoy the moment. Fingers crossed we get to see the ghost <laughs> the ghost ride and uh, the 500K come back to the Deegans. Thank you, guys. Right on, guys. Thanks.